in india water is sacred its rivers are revered as holy bestowing blessings the indian cultures as also the zoroastrian culture we believe that water is life water is not only life giving water is itself life but the awareness of water as a resource comes with zoroastrians who come from a desert part of iran years then kerman and water is very very precious there the weather was very very dry where the water was would evaporate and the system that they evolved over a period of time was that of a kanath so in years they in uh, very olden times uh, they have developed the uh, aquadust or the uh, what are called the kanath system uh, these are uh, underground uh, irrigation systems uh, quite uh, deep sometimes uh, 30 to 40 meters underground Now if you have a village here and if somebody detects a, a underground tunnel of water channel of water which is say kilometer or 2 kilometers sometimes even 5 kilometers away then the most common thing to do would be to bring that water to your village and in order that this water does not become stale and begin to stink they would they would ventilate it with bath gears with wind towers when the zoroastrians came to india they brought along from iran the system of water harvesting the parsis in india adopted the kanath system of iran to develop the tanka system in india tanka is a system where you collect rain water when the rain falls automatically the roof gets clean the water of rain gets filtered two or three times in their own primitive way the entire water that is collected from the roof comes to the pipe to the kundi of the tanka that is the small place where we have all filtrations done we have a large boya it's a copper vessel with holes that is also having a malmal cloth that is the second thing you we have one outlet pipe when we do not want to we want to clean anything we just open that pipe and let the water flow out and not inside the tanka now the pipe that is going inside the tanka is at least 6 inches above the floor of that kundi so that even after all these filtrations to through all these things if there is any residue or anything that will reside in the kundi and we can always drain it out any time we want to then we have a huge pipe that will take the water in the tanka now on that also we have a complete uh copper net very thin very minute holes are there and from that net the water goes in a very clean very hygienic way and very fact that we our family has been drinking water from our tanka for more than a century clearly indicates that it's good pure water we don't warm the water we don't filter it and we drink it no stomach problems or anything are there it is absolutely clean the british uh, broke down our uh, you know community structures so as to overpower them 
and uh, that uh, you know ultimately made people dependent upon the state for water and uh, our traditional systems got neglected because pipe water supply was made available or irrigation canals were there but uh, you know that led to the neglect of uh, the traditional systems many of which were community level many were individual level also and uh, now that we are again facing the crisis so there is a need to uh, recall our ancient wisdom and uh, revert to those systems to the extent that uh, at least we can you know surmount the crisis and i think uh, there is plenty which can be done even at the individual level and that may involve uh, you know the very uh, basic architecture of our dwelling units there is still time to revive this and if it is not revived it will just be sort of lost for one thing i think we can have a small kind of a handout educating the people that listen this is a system where you don't depend on the on the municipality or the government to give you water and in those 100 hours that it rains in your area you make an arrangement and you get your year's quota of water but expecting people to straight away fall for it and uh, take it up uh, will be a little difficult so perhaps we can illustrate this by having it in some of the buildings it's exactly like you know solar uh, panels which uh, people are not very much uh, comfortable with so you start with the government buildings that listen our building has solar panels you can also have it and it's not all that difficult it can be you know it's a it's a matter of fighting at two three levels one is the social acceptance the second is the economic uh, acceptance it can be uh, subsidized you could be given certain incentives so on so forth and the third one is purely from the environment point of view as to what would be your contribution to saving a very precious resource